Hey, Brie. Hey. So what's cracking? Are we starting a podcast or what? We're starting a podcast. But it's more than a podcast. Hey, guys. Part two is here of the episode with Rachel Kirkconnell. And we're so excited for you to tune in and listen to what we got to say. Because we had a lot to say. And it was really fun to chat with a friend. Okay. I'll shut up now. Bye. I would love to get into this more. I think we'll get into this more as we continue to, mm-hmm. to learn more about like your and Matt's relationship now versus then. Mm-hmm. Um, it seems like your lives are meshing together. And, you know, we're at an age where, I mean, I'm talking to my boyfriend about what a life, a life together long term could look like. Yep. I'm sure you're talking with Matt about that. Mm-hmm. Is there anything that you feel like is just you have aspects of your life and your relationship that is specifically for you and any other aspects or relationships of your life that you're going to share with everyone when it comes to dating? Like if you guys get married and you mm-hmm. have kids and you're going to have interracial children, mm-hmm. like what aspects, like where do you draw the line of like this is what I'm comfortable with sharing in terms of my life, but this is where I'm going to shield my personal life because I'm, we are the only ones, Matt and I are the only ones that know Mm -hmm. what's happening between us. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's even hard now. Um, not even talking about like future. It's only, I feel like it'll only get more difficult from here on out. Um, but it's just tough because like people act like they know everything because they, they act like they know everything. Actually, this is funny. Just to, I don't even know if you guys saw this. I we did. <laughs> you know what I'm gonna say? I know Wait, you're gonna saw say. What? I, I don't know. Um, I, apparently the, car, I'm, I'm the car seat. Yeah, I'm pregnant. There's rumors going around online that Rachel like is pregnant. I'm not pregnant. You guys can Obviously. use that. You guys can use that as your clickbait. You guys can use that as your clickbait. <laughs> Rachel Kirkconnell <laughs> is not pregnant. Everyone. <laughs> Wait, but what would we also, use? You did just get a little bite of me saying I'm pregnant. So <laughs> use that for your. <laughs> this episode will pop off. <laughs> Turn up because That's disgusting. Yeah, because he he made an ad um, with Nissan and it he was like showing like stages of life and at the end of the ad he was putting on a car seat <laughs> and he was like I didn't yeah, even know like, that was it. the next stage of life and he was like oh and it's coming so then it started off with just a little ad and then people were like wait is he saying that Rachel's pregnant and that got so much traction <laughs> that like news outlets and whatnot picked it up i keep getting emails like from like you know all of the pop culture outlets like asking like do you care to comment on this like we're gonna run a story saying like you're pregnant (laughs) my um pr woman Lori, she um texted me the other day and she was like um i'm getting like questions about this like are you pregnant And, you know, it was so funny is like before that I had posted this um, story about me drinking decaf coffee because like, you know, you can't have caffeine when you're pregnant. Yeah. So I I was saying I was saying something about how I've been drinking decaf coffee and all this stuff. And that really like kicked into gear. And I didn't even like think about that. Really, just caffeine's just been like so bad for me with like with my anxiety and everything lately. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying to do like decaf. That's all it is. Um, but to your point, like, it's just funny because people think that they know everything. Like I'll even like come across, like, like I'll be tagged in like bachelor stuff every once in a while, or like even on like my, um, popular page or for you page or whatever, like on Instagram, I'll see like things from those bachelor accounts and people really think that they know everything or they'll Mm -hmm. speculate. Like there's even stuff going on with me and Tyler right now. And and he said something like we clash and like, there is nothing going on with Tyler and I, (laughs) like I love him. I wish him nothing but the best. Like if anything, it's like a brother, sister, hate, love kind of thing. Yeah. But like, I truly wish him nothing but the best. And like, just because Matt and him like don't hang out every single day, like they did, during, During quarantine, quarantine, when we had when nothing we else to, to do. do. Yeah, like, people think, like, oh, they're they not live together. Anymore. Yeah, like, it's just, like, like just because they're not spending every single day together doesn't mean that they hate each other now. And just because, like, 
I honestly don't even know what Tyler meant by half the things he said. He's probably just like in the hot seat in an interview. He's like, yeah. I mean, you could take a story and you can run with it. You can spin with it. I have a good TV show idea. We should bring average people off the street and put them in the hot seat and see what (laughs) shit they say. And be like, you could get them to say a lot. You get them fired. (laughs) I heard you're having beef with your boss, um, Jim. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Oh my gosh, that would be hilarious. Oh they would definitely God. lose their job after. But if they were thinking about like putting their two weeks in already, that would be hilarious. Yeah, that would be. <laughs> so do you feel like there are things but, then that you want to like shield from the public? Because you're like, yeah. the little, the less they know, the better. Um, no, only because like we know what's real and what's not real we know what's going on we know what's the truth and what's not the truth and whatnot and um and I think like even just like when I look at all of my what my audience has to say when I post anything it's 99% like super positive and people love seeing our relationship Mm post-show especially because of how it ended like I think like at the end of the day a lot of people are miserable, but a lot of people are also like really supportive and they just want like yeah. that love story. I will say, um, we did actually have a conversation, Matt and I, we had a conversation recently about our future children and whatnot and just what that looks like. And I told him like, I guess the only thing, not the only thing, I'm such a, a worrier, like I worry about everything. But one of the things that I'm worried about is I don't want our kids to, like, one day understand, like, how we met and, like, see everything and then be, like, either disappointed in me or be mad at me or feel betrayed in some way Mm. or just something. Like, I just don't want to hurt them in any way. And the thought of them seeing just, like, what everyone has to say about their mom or just what happened, like, that breaks my heart. Like, that's the one thing that I worry about the most probably is, like, Mm -hmm. what they're going to have to go through one day. Because, like, I want to give them, obviously, the best life I can give them. And I'm Mm -hmm. not even going to be able to understand some of the things that they go through in life. And that's another thing that breaks my heart. But luckily I will have Matt there to like walk them through, support yeah. them, everything. And us. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> love that. And us. Yeah. Right. It's like, I mean, that's the thing. Like it's a team effort and everything yeah. like that. But that does like, it makes me sad just thinking about them um, being hurt by me in some way. Cause like, obviously I'm going to love them so much. And like, I yeah. don't, ever want them to feel hurt by me especially in that way and like feel like they're unloved by me in any way especially as something just as simple as like the color of their skin you know yeah like especially if they were to get that from their father and that's someone I love so much you know so absolutely I guess that's the only thing that that I worry about when it comes to like our future and like you know having having children and whatnot but if if any of that ever comes about like I think I do want to be open and like transparent with anything that we go through in our life because there are a lot of interracial relationships out there. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I don't know, like I, I can't think of like, there are of course like couples out there that are, you know, really vocal on all of it, but I don't know if there's enough and it doesn't hurt to have one more. Mm -hmm. And, um, especially if people are willing to like, be supportive and listen and whatnot Mm -hmm. um because it's it's actually an you know it's an issue right now like there are a lot of people even like some people in our government don't even want interracial relationships to be legal at this point which is really scary yeah it is (laughs) because of this day and age where i'm like it's 2022 we're really like saying like we we shouldn't have like interracial relationships like that's Mm -hmm. so crazy um prior to dating matt Mm -hmm. did you how do you had a relationship with a person of color? I um, had only had like two serious relationships in my entire life. And I would say like I had, we talked about this earlier, like I don't know what dating means. Like <laughs> I maybe have like talked to and gone on dates with and whatnot with uh, men of color and whatnot. But like 
I um, I've never been in like, honestly, this is the most serious relationship I've ever been in in my life. Yeah. And like my my first serious relationship was in high school, mm. and that's as serious as it was as serious as a high school, school relationship is. Yeah. yeah, and then I um dated one other person like I talked to this guy in college for like way too long he was so caught up in his ex-girlfriend and I like waited around so long for him to get over her you waiting around for someone oh my shocker gosh wait Wait, I'm like because you're like well both of you are just like the most beautiful oh my well I was simping I was simping oh I was treated like regretfully now I was simping simping for Rachel and Matt or simping? Oh, no, I'm just saying I was <laughs> like simping for these guys. Yeah, that I was didn't simping. Oh, these... you were a simp. Yeah. I You're was a retired a... simp. Yes. I was too. I, no, I had guys like treat me like crap. And I can't even believe like I wasted like six months of my life on this guy just waiting around. And I can't believe to this day I did that. Um, he mm-hmm. like, he like manipulated me so much, gaslighted me, all this crazy stuff. And you know what was crazy is like I finally realized it. I was like, what am I doing? And I was like, yeah, this is, he actually kind of like ended things first. He was like, listen, like I, I'm just still not in this space. Like literally over six months later, he's like, I still just don't think I can do it. And I was like, you know what? You're right. Me neither. What are we doing? So we ended it. No joke. A week later, he was like, I don't know what I was thinking. Like, I love you. He literally was like, I love you. Let's date. The classic college Imagine fairy breaking tale. out with, breaking up with either of you. <sighs> oh my like, gosh, imagine. I, I could never. I got broken up with multiple times. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't fear rejection. Yeah. People will be like, I don't want to be with you. Oh, and yeah. I'm like, cool. I got rejected by guys all it's Yeah. And, and at that point, you're like, dang, what is wrong with me? You're like. Oh, no, I never said that. I was like, well, I did. you're fucked up What's in the wrong head. with you, <laughs> yeah. man? But after a while. On to like, the next. That's what's, that's what's so true is like half the time it probably is the guy just like internalizing whatever issues he's going or whatever internal issues he has, he's putting on to you, I guess. Right. But think about how many women sit there and think like, oh my gosh, what's wrong with me? Then again, like, of course, not saying like it's always the guy's fault and whatnot but saying that I I thought that like I was like there is something wrong with me and then um yeah long story short like looking back on it I'm like this guy was crazy Mm -hmm. and then um I finally like dated someone my senior end of senior year that lasted all of like I don't know not even six months and then I was single for like I think two years after that pretty much single all of college and then I went on the show and just like Felt like I had never had like this. Yeah, like I'd never felt like this real like connection where it's like anytime they walk in the room, like you're like, what was about it? What was about what was it about Matt? You know, what's so weird is like, I'm sure everyone could say this, like I'm sure all the girls could say this. But when I walked up to him and like as soon as like we were holding hands and like talking. And then we had that conversation that first time. I was like, I'm in so much trouble. I literally walked out. And like, as soon as like we locked eyes, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in trouble. Cause I, w- I was thinking I was in trouble. Cause I was like, this guy's like perfect, at least for me. And I didn't even know him yet. And I knew at least at the time I was like, I'm getting dumped. Like I'm getting my heart broken. Mm. and so I was like I'm in so much trouble that's exactly why I said that just looking at him I was like oh my gosh like how can you not like fall yeah I was like how can you not fall for this dude I mean I wasn't like that I I, I like why are you doing but that like, I was like, I, I was he I'm being so, Rachel on the reenactment yeah he looked so I mean we all were drooling at the time yeah they made him look I mean no I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> now that you're friends with Matt I'm friend. I know Brie through my friends from college I know Matt through one of my friends who he collaborated with on his book. And mm-hmm. um, shout out Cole. Shout out Cole. Shout out Cole Brown. <laughs> so obviously there's a lot of black people that have like come into your life now. Mm-hmm. Do you feel intimidated? And even with your audience, do you ever feel like you're like over compensating or what do you think about when you're like, okay, I'm going to walk in a room with all of Matt's friends mm-hmm. They're all black. Go. I will say, like, I I think, like, Matt just has good people in his life. Like, he doesn't have, like, any people that he's friends with are good people. To where I've never felt like that with you guys. 
everyone's always been so kind and accepting. And even if they thought that I might feel like uncomfortable in any way, his friends have always been like, I told him to get back together with you. Or like, <laughs> like even if they're lying, they're just yeah. like, I told him like he needed to be with you or like just anything reassuring, which is obviously so sweet and whatnot. So like, I have to say like, I never ever felt uncomfortable. Like there's never like, there's no scenario that pops into my, my mind that mm -hmm. I felt uncomfortable or like thought like, okay, like, do they hate me? Or like, do I feel uncomfortable because I'm surrounded by a bunch of black people? Like, no, mm -hmm. that's never ever been the case with you guys or with any of Matt's friends or like even any people in my life. The only time I would say, not that I feel <laughs> uncomfortable, um, but maybe I feel like I hate myself, like I'm trying to think like the right words is just, well, it's with random people on the street that come up and they were like, you know, like freaking out, like, oh my gosh, it's Matt James, it's The Bachelor. And then they're like, oh, and you're Rachel. Or it's like, oh, you're the girl you picked, huh? And wow. obviously like they're a person of color, they're a black person or, you know, just whoever, they're not white. And then that's, um, my mind immediately goes there where I'm like, they hate me. Dig into that. I mean, I'm sure if they're they're recognizing Matt and they recognize me and they only saw what they saw on TV and what was posted online, mm -hmm. how can they not have this like preconceived notion of me? Um, and how can they like me with what was posted? So I do feel I don't think uncomfortable is the word because like I don't want it sounding like I'm uncomfortable with them or anything, but I guess I just feel uncomfortable in the situation because I feel like they hate me. Mm. And I just want to look at them and be like, like, I'm sorry, but also like, like, please don't think that way of yeah. me. And, yeah. and, um, I don't know, maybe I think like that just because I've one, just seen what everyone has to say about me that doesn't know me or even like the dms i've gotten just anything mm -hmm. it's never it's not nice for the most part and then of course when i see their profile picture a lot of times it's a person of color and i get it because they're probably so like hurt and like disgusted by me and like everything that they had seen and even like rumors that had gone around just like all of that stuff like i'll all see crazy things that didn't even happen or like that wasn't me like there was this one thing that um some girl at my school and I I I knew her like she dated um she dated one of my friends for a while to where like we were cordial like I would say like we were friends like we weren't the best of friends we only hung out in group settings and whatnot um I guess people were so crazy they were going through every single person that I'd ever interacted with on social and they found, they came across this girl on her social media, and her best friend was black. And she had posted a picture with him, and I think he was, like, dressed as a slave or something terrible. I remember this. Oh and people were trying to say it was me. They, like, blurred out her picture, but they were saying it was me. So then oh I still get pic I'll still get comments, like, people saying, like, you know, like, how could you, like, pose with a black guy, like, as a slave? Like, just all this stuff. Like, a lot, mm. like, how could you pose with the Confederate flag when, like, that wasn't me either? Like, all this stuff. So, like... I don't even know what people think of me, what they think I did, what they think I've said, like who knows, but either way, I just feel like a really shitty person mm -hmm. or I just feel so bad and like uncomfortable in the sense because I feel like they just like hate me or they think like not good things about me. They, they mm -hmm. think negatively of me. So not not with people I know, not with people who have gotten to know me, not people who are open to even getting to know me, but just people that we come across in the street and yeah. whatnot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do feel. I have to say, one, to respond to this comment and a comment that you made previously, it's like you have to kind of like reframe the the hate that you think that people might place on you. Like one for your children, for instance, I could never hate my mom for anything. I can only, all I knew is that I don't know what I don't know. So now it's on me to go explore what my relationships with black men and black yeah. people are going to look like. Like yeah. my mom did everything in her power as a non-woman of color to 
give me every every part, every piece of the puzzle of the world that I could possibly have for then me to make an informed decision of like, yeah. this is what I need to do. This is what I need to go pursue. This is who yeah. I am. And it like, I would have never hated my mom for falling short in any way whatsoever. Cause at the end of the day, like my love for her, like was yeah. greater than anything. So like reframe the hate that you think you're going to get from people and tell mm-hmm. yourself like, you will do a great and wonderful job because you and Matt are in this together, yeah. essentially. Yeah. But I guess my second part was like, I feel like this felt like an obvious question, but like I did not go public on my socials whatsoever until the night of the premiere because I knew that people were going to go through your socials and pick apart every I single you going, thing yeah, that you did. Mm-hmm. So my question to you is like, did you not think that people would have dug into you, your yeah. friends, your family? And did you did 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 it not occur to you or did it occur to you that it wouldn't get that deep that people were gonna actually misplace photo yeah. like well like I Photoshop basically yeah. people of Well, I love this people, just because you um, photos? I definitely like knew what was on my social media and I was like fine with it like people were even getting to the point where you know like I don't remember if or I don't know if you guys remember um that whole trend of like every sorority girl ever having like that orange filter on her her (laughs) feed like that I was a victim of that for sure and people were trying to turn that into like me like brown fishing or black fishing people oh. like me try- like it, it got to a point like at the beginning people were really like just like trying like they were reaching for stuff that wasn't there to where it didn't pick up um and then I think like it was definitely all like the reddit people like 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 where it started I guess and um from what I understand like one thing I love about Tyler, speaking of Tyler, like coming back to him, he was like, don't Who's ever, Tyler? Tyler Cameron, sorry. He was like, sorry, don't I know ever, who he is. yeah, oh. <laughs> I hate you. Oh my gosh, I was like, Tyler Cameron, go. Yeah, you um, know, let's go, get with the program. So like, I actually like snuck to New York um, a week after Matt and I came home from filming and I was with him. Um, here in New York, just like hiding out in his apartment for a few days. He <laughs> definitely wasn't allowed. Um, and he FaceTimed Tyler and Tyler was just giving me advice on everything. He was like, don't ever go on Reddit. Don't ever see what people have to say about you because like it'll affect you and your mental health. But it'll also he I'll never forget it. He was like, you'll start to like try and change like who you are to like to like please them Mm -hmm. and they'll never be pleased like they'll always like never be happy with like you no matter what you do so I stayed off of all of that because I was already getting enough of it in my social and whatnot Mm -hmm. like on Instagram and everything um but I remember like my cousin calling me and she was like people are like really digging into like everything they can apparently like she was basically saying like they really can't find much on your social Mm -hmm. so they're looking into like anyone you've ever tagged in anything anyone you've ever tweeted at anyone you've ever like tagged in a facebook but like anything like any they'll go through they'll go through she was like they're going through your followers list like it was notorious this show is notoriously known for its detectives yeah True. I'm a it's detective. True detective on here. Yeah. These people are better at their job of being a detective for contestants on The Bachelor than, than the actual the producers. Well, or not the even FBI. the producers, yes. but no, literally the FBI, <laughs> the literal FBI who does not even Wait, know how to do social. Hire, um, they should gosh, hire. They should literally hire people from the internet. Trolls. Yeah, yeah. trolls should. are good. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, they, um, they, I guess, like couldn't find anything on my social. So then they went through 
all of my quote unquote friends, which like obviously some really were my friends, but some were also just people I was like, you know, acquaintances with or people that I was at the same party also, with. Also, we were like in, this was like whenever Facebook was a thing is I had like 2000 friends on Facebook. So like, true. Oh my God. A lot of people in our life that yeah. we don't either agree with or we don't have the same views. And we have family we, members who we don't agree with their opinions. Yeah. And so that was really like already like really sad to think like they're judging me off of these people's views and that was and I did see some people be like why are you judging her off of other people's views and like what they're having to say like that's not her but then a lot of people were like well it's the company you keep around and it's like all right you can't win either way you You can't that's at the end of the day we have to realize yeah so did the show and as we continue to wrap up but did the show give you guys any mental health like therapists or guidance or and for both of you, um, they did say like, if you need therapy, we can cover X amount of sessions, <laughs> um, through this list. How many? I sessions? can't remember. I don't through think it was a enough. list of therapists. They you couldn't even pick your own. It was like here's a list that will work with like our insurance, basically. <laughs> From what I understand. I didn't even. That's the only thing I regretted after doing the show was that I did not seek therapy until way later on my own. Mm -hmm. That is wild. Like you went from like how many followers did you have before you went on the show? I don't even remember. Like five, four thousand. Like not a lot. Yeah. And then how many do you have now? Uh, Like under a little under a million, right? Yeah, I would yeah. say, yeah, I think over eight, shoot, I don't know, 860. Yeah. And it's overnight being, it yeah. was overnight. It's overnight, yeah. it happens. I mean, most, almost like all of those were, like I've barely, I don't, I don't think any of us like really take off after the show. Mm-hmm. So like all of that was during the show. Yeah. And that's what kind of like brings me back to even what me and Michelle were talking about. Whereas like all of those people followed me in the middle of controversy. So like, what, what does that th- say? What does that say? And what does it say that the host of the show is going to defend you over all of the other content? It's, it's crazy. I yeah. mean, it just shows the state of, yeah. So like, yeah, it's crazy. My, I will say like my mental health, like I'm still, I'm still trying to get back to, I don't think I'll ever be like, where I once was like I ha- I struggled with mental health before the show and um and just like, going through that like, like there were some days like I didn't know if I'd make it to be honest with you guys mm-hmm. and so like just being like where I am now it's really nice to see like how far I've come with everything um and that e- doesn't even go to say with like everything that happened to me because like I said like I really don't want to be a victim with everything um but honestly just what every contestant goes through like it's a really crazy thing to put yourself through that environment and then just to deal with everything that comes after that even if you're loved yeah even if you're like a favorite which like Brie you're you know like she's a favorite people love her and I'm still feel like you even probably get things that affect you in some way yeah it just like opens up another can of worms like even whenever I came off the show and like I can still confidently say to this day I have not experienced like one piece of like hate or a negative comment but it's just it's a different world whenever I I literally woke up out of a panic on vacation with my family in Mexico because I posted like a mirror selfie mm-hmm. and I woke up out of a panic that someone that people who saw my social pin pinned my location where I was with my family on vacation came to our vacation home and killed every member of you my had family. A, you had a that dream. That was my dream on vacation. And like and that's so not it's normal. like those are the kinds of like things of yep. just like that I that I was dealing with still not having experienced any type of like negative comments from people. It was just like it's a lot. My safety felt like it was at risk. Yeah, no, it's 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 just a lot just to even think about. Like I would, yeah, I would get sick to my stomach. Even like negativity aside, just thinking about how many eyes are on you whenever and you're walking down the street or at a restaurant, anything social in public, everything like like it. Like, it made me sick to my stomach thinking, 
about how many, like, I would think, like, who's in their living room, like, talking about me right now? Who is having this opinion over me? And 99%, like, at the time, I'd be like, most of it's probably negative, you know? Mm -hmm. And, like, that really, obviously, like, takes a toll on you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I I'm, I I'm... I'm doing as good as like anyone could be doing, I guess, in like, yeah. this crazy situation. And I will say through all of that, I, I still feel like I can't complain. I'm very thankful yeah. for everything that's come of it. But yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's like a, honestly like a social experience. So it is. It, it really is. And so looking forward, like what do you, for you and Matt, what do you guys tell each other that you want to take away from this? Like, I, because part of me going into this was like, I had to be so comfortable with knowing, like, I will always and forever be Brie who went on The Bachelor. Yeah. And to this day, being like meeting new, moving to a new city and meeting new people and making like these new, like, forging these new friendships and relationships, like, that's not what I wanted people to think about me. But at the end of the day, now I'm like, this is who the fuck I am and this is part of my story. And the mm -hmm. only way that it's going to help me is if I lean into it and use it yeah. to my advantage. So yeah. what do you and Matt talk about that you want to take away from this entire experience? I will say like, it's definitely different. I think it's different um, for him being not only the lead, but being the first black bachelor, just being a male in the space because it's mostly like female followers and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I think he struggles to find, like, not only, like, like, of course the leads, like, they have plenty of paths they could take and whatnot, mm -hmm. but Matt's just, in my eyes, like, he's just different because he wants it to have meaning and purpose, and obviously, like, he wants it to be enjoyable at the end of the day, too, but I think for me, like, I don't know. It, it's it's really just like, I guess I just want people to know the real me. Mm -hmm. And I think I want, um, I don't want any of it to like really affect our relationship at the end of the day, which I really don't think it has. Because of course at the beginning, like it was as bad as it could get. So for the most part, it's been, like, pretty, like, easy breezy mm -hmm. sailing. Like, not saying we're perfect by any means. We've gone through, like, a lot. Um, and no one ever sees that stuff. Like, you go through so much stuff behind yeah. closed doors. And, you know, we, we work through all of that because it's worth working through. Like, I, I will say this. Like, we, we talked about this recently. Um, a lot of people think that dating and being in a relationship is all about like entertainment and it's all about having fun. And we were, we were watching this. Um, he actually went to this church service the other day and he sent it to me. Um, and the guy was saying like dating is for like evaluation. Mm -hmm. You're sitting there with that person and you are evaluating like whether this is a relationship worth pursuing to to be with them forever because at the end of the day like that's not what everyone's goal is but a lot of people's goal when you're dating is to get married and start a family and have the rest of your life with that person and like obviously like pray that it works out and so I guess it's just like our goal and our future and whatnot from here on out is just to like you know really work towards that and not let anyone else get in the way because like the biggest advice that he's given me throughout all of this was like we aren't put on this earth to please other people mm -hmm. we will never ever please everyone around us especially like the people on the internet like we yeah. could do i could cure cancer and people would find something wrong with it <laughs> for really? real dr like, anthony fauci <laughs> <laughs> i could like yeah like i could save the world you'd be like oh she saved it wrong like yeah. you know not just me just anyone people will always have something to say. And so he just was basically saying like, don't ever just remind yourself, like don't ever try and please people. Cause sometimes like I really will try hard to like, like I'll be like, Oh, I like, I can't do it this way. Or like, I want to do it this way for them. Or I, I have to say it this or just whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Even if it's something as simple as an Instagram post, like it's just so ridiculous. Yeah. And he just keeps me grounded. He's like, we're not here to please other people, but 
we're here to like please God at the end of the day. And I just yeah. want you to remember that because like that's like the foundation of our relationship too. Yeah. And so that's like probably been our biggest um not struggle, but like our biggest challenge recently was to yeah. just like stay grounded within that because the world gets very loud Crazy. Yeah. and you kind of lose track on like what you should be thinking and where you should be just like what your path is, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait, can we have a moment really quick? Yeah. What's the moment? I was swear to God. I was just thinking about this on the train yesterday on our overnight. Matt told me he, this is coming from him. He was, he said, I feel like I've always, I've always been a people pleaser. Yeah. He still and I swear that. that that has stuck with me ever since I because I feel very strongly that that has been my downfall yeah as like just who I am mm. is I feel like I'm constantly being a people pleaser and putting out an image that I think people want to see of me yeah I and think we all are the guilty one of it. thing that like stuck with me where I was like well if Matt doesn't give a fuck I don't give a fuck <laughs> And, like, that's the thing, though. Like, he still struggles with that. Like, we all we struggle all do. with it. We all do. Yeah. We do. To where Everyone's we so have to remind But he was one of the first – he was one of the – he was the, the first person, I think, to admit that to yeah. me and call himself out for yeah. it. Because I think we could reframe it and say it a bunch of different ways that we want to and say, oh, it's this, 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 this. At the end of the day, I'm a people – I'm a people pleaser. Yeah. I do things for people. I do things to please people and to give them an image yep. of myself that yep. they want to see. Yeah. Yep. I've gotten, I mean, I've gotten in trouble literally trying to please both sides of an argument because I don't want to be, I don't want one person to be mad at me. So then I'm stuck in the middle of it and I'm trying to be like Switzerland. And it kind of makes and you, then, it, it's worse. It's yeah, totally because then both you. people end up being mad at you and then it's just not good. So yeah, I, I hear you. And I think we've had a lot of conversations around that because I think mm -hmm. he struggles with it a lot too. And um, he's just helped me a lot through that saying like, just please remind yourself like you can try so hard to be this person that you think people want you to be and you can do all the right things and it's still not going to be enough mm -hmm. so he was like just basically trying to tell me just to be as authentic as we both can be and those who still stick around like it's because they truly love you for you and mm -hmm. we're not here to please other people but yeah we're at the end of the day like we're we're here because god put us here and mm -hmm that's it like there's not much more to it yeah. yeah and like I think even thinking about the impact of social media and that which is like so crazy someone was like we're gonna create an app where you can post a photo and like be with people and like <laughs> post with your friends Start and then so it was innocent. like <laughs> yeah, so innocent and then it's like no millions of people our our brains aren't developed to have millions of people shit on you for who you are i worry i i really truly worry about um like the younger generation like i hear about children like as young as like eight and nine years old being on social media and like having mental health issues or like committing suicide or something over being yeah. bullied yeah. online and yeah. i'm like that's just not how it should be like mm -hmm. you should not be a child not even be fully developed you're not we're not even fully developed right till we're here. like 20 we're 20 yeah and I'm like, I can't even imagine like nine year old, 10 year old children, but even just women, just little girls, like nine year old girls seeing this crazy facade on social media of all these perfect women. And like, that's how they're supposed to look and act. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it's really scary. So yeah. that's a negative note to end on. <laughs> it is. It is. But I, I will say that just you and just seeing how apologetic you are and how much you've learned and how much it's a journey not even of like whatever you went through but yeah. just like all of us are on a journey of being confident of finding our faith finding who we are finding our value systems yeah it's it's hard to do it even as me where I'm not doing it for millions of people but for you guys too who it's like you've fallen into this and now you have to respond to a million of people while being on the journey while yeah. people criticizing what you think what you look like what you're eating what you're drinking like all <laughs> yeah. of this stuff yeah it's crazy well and I like I also feel like it's a really good place to end on something that I like continue have to continue to have to remind myself is like 
we are all human beings at the end of the day with full in-depth stories, nuanced stories about yeah. the lives that we lived. Like if you asked me, I wouldn't say that I have all the experience and the wisdom in the world, but I would tell you that I lived like five different chapters in my life and yeah. they were all different person yeah. just to get to, just to, for me to get to where I am today. So even just like hearing the stories of like, I'm going to be nicer to that girl that I judged on Instagram yeah. or that person that I look up to, or I'm just going to keep reminding myself that it's, not always rosy and it's not always perfect but also that there's just simply more to their story and what you're saying day to day yeah. mm -hmm. and that's like a huge thing to apply into your relationships too is like that's like one of like the key things Matt and I always try or at least I try to do with him is like we are always changing and we're always like the, at the end of the day my goal I just want to be a better version of myself the next day than I was the day before like yeah as long as I'm slowly, you know, trying to better myself, like, that's enough. And I think that people forget that in relationships sometimes, too, is, like, we are, are like, ever-evolving. Sometimes that person that, like, Matt and I, we are not the same people now than we were when we first started dating. And I think that people sometimes get stuck on that when they're in these relationships. Is like, you used to do this, or, like, you used to be like this, or you used to like this, or whatever it is and it's like where did that person go and it's like you know I I'm I'm different now mm -hmm. and I think that people I think sometimes that's why relationships don't work out it's because you fall hard fast at the beginning and people change and it's like I fell in love with this person but that person's not there anymore and mm -hmm. they'll always be there in some sense but I feel like you just like elevate it's an evolution in some way. Exactly. you can evolve together and, and you have to evolve to I really yeah. think that you have to I saw this one story. It was like I was talking to my grandpa one day. It was like one of those like cheesy, like either like Twitter threads or like, you know, like those things, like those viral things you see. But it was so sweet. It was like um, I talked to my grandpa about how he like was with my grandma for like over 50 years. And he was like, well, I basically dated like seven different women <laughs> through the relationship. And I instead of that. being, yeah. And instead of being upset about it, I embraced like every single woman that yeah. she yeah like changed into and I think that's like a really good thing to like just like look at your relationship from here on out just like mm -hmm. instead of taking change in a bad way you should really try and walk with that person and welcome and it yeah and welcome I it and enjoy that. it yeah for every stage that that person's in and, and enjoy every stage that you're going through too mm -hmm. yeah. and if they're a Gemini it's 14 people <laughs> <laughs> literally <laughs> Oh, oh I feel like this was way more emotional than I thought it would be. I knew it was going to be emotional. <laughs> well, we could end on our, actually a really wonderful, fun game. Okay. Oh, yes. A risque game. And I'm going to change my one of our answer, one of our <laughs> oh, no. options. Risque. Yeah. So this game is called F. Mary Kill. <laughs> Frick. And it's not that bad. Frick, Mary Kill. <laughs> Oh, no. Frick, Mary kill. ABC's The Bachelor. No. <gasps> Love Island. And I feel like um, Love at First Sight because I feel like you and Matt almost met at first, like had this love at first sight. I like to sight. think that. No, I really wait, do. Wait, is, love, yeah. is it Love at First Sight or Love is Blind? No, 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 no. There's two. There's, oh, there's Love at, there's literally a, a reality show where they get out and they see each other and they're like, I'm in love. Oh. That's Love at First Sight. What? And then there's also Love is Blind where you actually, it, 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 yeah. it aims to yeah. dig below the surface. Whereas Love is First Sight is actually very surface. Yeah. Because you look at them and you're like, it's all about. We're connected. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So go okay all right um my three options were well this is tough because you said the bachelor bachelor and then love island yeah so that's hard guys love i'm not so i will say i'm not um a big reality tv person i did not watch the bachelor before i went on i have never seen love island <gasps> and i've never seen this other one you're talking Gasp. about i've never but, seen the last one but i'm sorry yeah. love island is Okay, I know. So so I'm going to do this from an outsider because from what I've seen with Love Island, they're so supportive of one another for the most part. They don't 
try and pit the men and women against each other, but they really build friendships for the most part. Of course, if I feel like if correct me if I'm wrong, because I could be so wrong. But if anything, if any drama happens, it is organic. They're like fighting over one person they both really like, which is op- like, of course, that could happen in that environment. Yeah. Whereas like The Bachelor, of course, little things are stirred. And people are fighting about shrimp and whatnot. <laughs> it's a little different. <laughs> so I will say, I feel like you got to marry Love Island. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and kill the love at first sight. Okay. Because. Sad. Just, that doesn't, I, I like to think that Matt and I, um, we, we were love at first sight, but we went through a lot to get there. So <laughs> yeah. that's just not true. <laughs> Okay, and fair. I don't like people thinking that they're in love with someone without even speaking to them. You got to talk to them. But you admit that you had like the craziest, deepest connection whenever yeah. you laid eyes on him. But how many of those relationships work out? Well, don't say that about your own relationship. No, no, no. I'm talking about the show. Oh, oh I don't um, know. I don't know the percent. We'll yeah. have to go to some. We'll have to yeah. Google the percentage. I mean, in reality, how, how what's the percentage of all of these relationships yeah. and all these shows? It's entertaining TV, but if I were to have to kill out of the three shows, it would be that one. And then definitely F The Bachelor because it's just, I feel like it's a staple in our pop culture at this point. And obviously good things still come from it. And friendships form from it. Yeah. And it's still fun at the end of the day. And it's entertaining. Yeah. And I can't bash on it too much because I am where I am today because of the show. And I have who I have today. And I'm happy and I'm in love because of the show. Aww. So, and I mean, I literally wouldn't be sitting here with you That's guys so true. if it weren't for the show. So yeah. I can't kill the show off. I can't kill the show off. Well, yeah. I would kill the show off, but... <laughs> Rightfully knowing that. All right, you heard it here first. <laughs> Brie would kill the bachelor. I like how I we're, would, like, <laughs> announcing as if, like, someone's hearing this in real time. <laughs> you heard it here first. Because they will. That's the first time. Right. Guys, the first time anyone's going to hear that I'm not pregnant is from this show. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Because I'm not going to comment woot, on woot, that. Woot, woot. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just can't give room. Wait, so then when you actually get pregnant, we'll air the show. Okay. <laughs> All right, so in nine months. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Surprise, I that actually is am. crazy. Do you wait? Do you wake up every day and you're just like, that's fucking hilarious? Sometimes you're not one to like comment, like, you don't even, you haven't even been on a podcast. No, you know what's funny? No one asks. Like, I'll get the occasional email, but no one, no one asks. And that's another reason why I'm like, dang, people hate me, they don't even care to like, no, add to talk to me. I think they're nervous because we were like, oh my god, we want Rachel to come. Yeah. Beep, beep. <laughs> well, it's always nervous whenever you want to talk to something that's so like deeply pure and yeah. emotional. But that's what I'm saying. At the end of the day, it's like I find these very therapeutic of like this is my only outlet that people can actually see who I am and yeah. learn a little bit more about me because I'm just they're not. Social media is performative. We'll talk about this next season. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you for coming. My first podcast, it, it'll be hard to beat. I really don't see how it'll get better then. Unless they, like, give you a million dollars. That's true. You know what? Money is not everything. That's true, too. (laughs) So you would still rank us first? (laughs) Of course. What? First, at least in my heart, but then the money, the check comes in. It's a little different. I'm just kidding. kidding. (laughs) Pre-tax. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to Yeah, But Who Cares? We care a lot about what you think, and actually your reviews really help us out so please like subscribe follow or comment and leave a review even if it's negative we want to improve and i'd like to give a big fat disclaimer we are not professionals we are not therapists we are not financial professionals so please seek out professional help um and this podcast was produced with our friends over at yeah but who cares including our trusty producer serena Serena. Um, it was also produced in partnership with Under the Influence. Shout out Under the Influence. Shout out Under the Influence. Where can people find us? If you want to find us, you can find us on our personal pages, Bree Springs and Sesana. Yes. But more importantly, you can find Yabba Who Cares on Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube. Did I miss anything? 
I, that's actually the most accurate one. Yeah. That's the most, those are the most important ones. Yes. So thank you. Goodbye. See you next week. Kisses. Kisses. Kisses.